Let us understand an important machine learning use case of big data called collaborative filtering. It is commonly used for building recommender systems. These techniques aim to fill in the missing entries of a user item association matrix. MLLAB supports model based collaborative filtering, meaning it would give out the model instead of directly generating the recommendations. In MLLAB, users and products are described by a small set of latent factors that can be used to predict missing entries. MLLAB uses ALS algorithm, alternating least squares algorithm to learn these latent factors. Let us take an example of how to generate recommendations. It is also known as collaborative filtering. Let us first look at the data ratings.dat. This file is in HDFS at the location slash data slash mllab-1m slash ratings.dat. You can open Hue and click on File Browser and then click on the first slash in the path to go to the top level and then click on data folder and then ml-1m. Inside this folder, you will find a file ratings.dat. Click to open it. This file contains textual data. Each line represents a rating. The values in each line are separated by double colon. The first number is user ID, second number is movie, and third one is ratings given by this user to this movie ID and fourth number is the timestamp. In the first line of this file, one is user ID, one one nine three is the movie ID and five is the rating given by this user to this movie ID. To know more about this data, you can take a look at readme file in the same folder. Now let us use the Spark ML Lab to generate recommendations. We are going to divide this movie ratings dataset into two parts, training and test. Training being 80%, test being remaining 20%. Using training data, we will train the model and we will generate recommendations for the test data using the model. Let us open Web Console and start the version 2 of Spark. We are going to use Spark 2 using the command slash user slash spark2.0.1 slash bin slash spark shell. Let's launch the Scala Spark shell. Wait for it to start. Once the Scala prompt appears, we can start working on it. Let us first import the needed libraries. Here, we are importing ALS, which is the algorithm alternating least squares that we are going to use. The data we saw earlier, we are going to create a data frame out of it. Since we already know the schema, we can use the reflections way of creating data frame. First, we would create an RDD having objects of a case class and then we will use 2df function to convert this RDD into a data frame. So, let us first define the case class rating with four members, user ID, movie ID, rating and timestamp. Next, we define a method that would convert each line of text into an object of rating class. Let us test this function individually with the first line of text. You can see that it has successfully converted the string into object. Next, we create an RDD with the name raw using sc.txt file with the path name. Let us check if RDD is okay by calling take function with one as argument. It should display the first line of text. For us, it is working fine. If it does not work correctly, double check the location of file 
you have passed in sc.txt file. Now, let us apply our parse rating functions on each record of this raw RDD by using a map transformation and call 2df method on it to convert this RDD into data frame. Now, we have a data frame ratings. Let us check if this data frame is correctly formed using show method. You can see that it is in tabular form. Now, let's break this data frame into two parts, training and data set using random split. With training data frame, we are going to train model and with test data frame, we are going to test the model. Now, let's first create an instance of ALS algorithm and then set various parameters on it. Afterwards, set the name of the user column, item column, and ratings column. We are basically mapping our data frames columns to the various fields that the algorithm needs. Afterwards, we can simply call als.fit on our training data frame. It might take some time. Once done, it would return the model. This model can be used to generate recommendations. You can save this model on a file which can be transferred to a production environment and generate the recommendation in real time. Now, let's prepare the recommendations using the function transform on the model with test data frame as the argument. And using take, you can quickly check if it has generated predictions. For us, it is working fine. You can save the results to a file using prediction.write.format followed by save. 